Wow. <laughs> I see so many people I love. Um, so good evening. Um, first, I just wanted to uh, give a shout out to the New, New York Studio School and the work you do here, along with the great gallery program that has a Super James Castle exhibition up. Um, I'm just, you know, touched by, by the sort of position the school holds. I've, uh, I've been invited here by Mel and Margaret to do, do visits with the students, and I always leave very inspired, and uh, I know there's a lot of behind the work and dedication and heart that goes into keeping a program alive. And thank you, Leanne Maxey, for inviting me to speak. Uh, right before this, we were talking. She said, when was the first time you were here? And I was kind of like, when was that? And I think it was in the early 90s I started attending um, the lecture series here. And so it's, a, it's a, a pleasure to have that come full circle and be speaking this evening. OK, why the Grateful Dead album on screen? <laughs> um, Oaxamaxoa. I spent so much time trying to learn to pronounce that as a teenager. And um, it's really the first thing I remember um, drawing, like carefully copying, and along with a lot of other um, uh, rock album art. They were really my first exposure to um, art. I lived in Madera, California, Central Valley. Um, the nearest museum was in San Francisco. Uh, it would be years before I actually uh, would visit any museum. But, you know, popular culture was really rolling through. Um, this would have been in the, like, late 60s, so the influence of uh, what was happening in San Francisco and all the psychedelic art, you know, it was just an easy overflow into uh, a 13, 14-year-old's life, whether you were on Haight-Ashbury or not. And, um, you know, as I put this together, I kind of smile because it's, you know, as you'll see in the rest of the lecture, there's skeletons, there's these round egg shapes, there's lotus flowers, it's, um, there's mushrooms, there's all these things that still exist in my work. Um, and this is going, <laughs> again, we're going way back. Uh, this next slide of, is of me and my mother, and this is around 1979 or 80. I was 20, 21, and um, this is before I, I had any formal art training. My mother owned a, um, a bakery on the Upper West Side of Manhattan, and I was a cake decorator. And there is some similarities to making up pots of icing and colors is like a palette, and then you, you decorate. Um, it was also at that time that uh, I migrated to the Art Students League, and I would go to their um, drop-in figure drawing classes. And so that was my... Uh, first experience like stepping into an atmosphere similar to this where you, you, you walk in and you smell turpentine at the door and then there's a live model and you have your pad and et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and I, and I couldn't, you know, there's no way to, to say the impact of the late 70s and the punk do-it-yourself kind of aesthetics that was happening <laughs> in New York City at the time. Um, this is Tish and Snooky when they first opened their store, Manic Panic. It was on 8th Street. This is them, uh, you know, just a couple years ago, performing in much the same garb. Their, their band was called the Sick Fucks. And they dressed in, um, we shared Catholic school, they dressed in these nuns' outfits. And um, I learned to dress in that store, you know, before going out. Um, we would go in there and would start at 8 and go out at 1, and the rest of the time was spent dressing. Um, they're also responsible for my hair today. Um, but there was a, a lot of, uh, you know, I'm making light, but just this, um, uh, it was a very fertile time in New York at the time, you know. Uh, the rents were cheap, there were a lot of artists, a lot of poets, a lot of musicians, um, a lot of uh, cross-fertilization, you know, and a lot of just make it up as you go. Uh, one more influence. This is, um, we're going to 1995 now, relatively speaking, and it was my first trip to Mexico um, to attend the Day of the Dead. And, uh, you know, again, I look at this, it has all the things that I love that reoccur in my work. Skeletons, flowers, excess, this large doll, you know, could be a Madonna figure, um, and lace. 
you know, which would come to play <laughs> an important um, role in my current work. And, um, okay, to, so, and to the Day of the Dead influence, on the top left is um, La Katrina, and she is the fashionable lady, and um, she's an image from the Mexican engraver, Jose Posada. He worked around 1910 in uh, woodcuts, and um, there was lots of Im imagery, um, and it was mostly a way of uh, criticizing you know, the politic or the times, you, you know, if you made it funny and these little skeletons, it was, you know, less, uh, less targeted as to who you were speaking to. Um, on the bottom left is myself dressed up as this character. And this is something, if you're in Mexico around the Day of the Dead, it's still done. Lots of women will dress up as uh, the Katrina, the fashionable lady, and hang out around um, November 1st and 2nd. I was in a residency in, in Basel, Switzerland for six months. And I don't know, the place, it's, it's beautiful, it's functioning, and it just asks you to do weird things. You know, it was so, <laughs> like, it's like growing up in the suburbs. It was just kind of still and okay, you know, and um, all the artists there, we did these really weird things. So I dressed up as her, it wasn't the Day of the Dead. <laughs> and just went with some friends strolling through Basel. And uh, it was my, probably my only performative act, but uh, anyway. And um, a large drawing on a, the right is, um, that's a little bit of a self-portrait of a Katrina with the little smileys. Um, so in early 2000, I was working for Time, Inc., and this is a publisher of magazines. And um, a lot of glossy wedding magazines were starting to become popular again, the sort of the big white weddings. And uh, I was working full time, so I didn't have a lot of studio time. So I, I don't know, they, did, they just asked for the Posada treatment, you know, do, do this uh, fashionable lady. And, you know, with minor critique on big white weddings, not that I'm totally against them. It was just uh, growing up in the 70s, we were sort of, um, anti the big white wedding. You know, we all, we, I thought of a wedding, I'd be on a horse on the beach, etc. Anyway, so I did a, a whole body of work, and, and this was you know, really about having availability of materials and not a lot of time, and you know, just keep working. So let's see, the, the one on the left is 28 by 30, it's titled Eve. Um, let's see, what do I got next? Okay, this is. Um, Back to Basel. This is 2008, and I, you know, I took I took this slide because it shows um, well some of the cake decorating tools that I, I still use. I fill the bags with a, a thick acrylic medium and then apply the paint like you would decorate a cake and get, get this chunky surface. Bones, another bride up in the corner. One more, this is a Bonescape. It's 40 by 30, 2009. And um, yeah, there's a couple of bows that are just stuck on the canvas, so there's a, a real relief. And this is something that I've gone back and forth in my work with um, the physicality of gluing things on the canvas. And later, when I got to uh, using lace for stencils, I got that same um, effect, but without actually sticking something on the canvas. Okay, this is um, a photo I snapped in 2013. It's in Peru during the uh, celebration of the Virgin Carmen. Um, what can I say? I love the whole aesthetic of this. There, again, there's the lace usage. There were plenty of um, sort of Virgin Carmen uh, troops marching, but this was a little combination with the little devil mask. <laughs> this is, I like that there was both the light and the dark um, examples. I love those big sequined hearts that they're wearing. Anyway, it's a, it a fun, and, and this is the kind of thing I like to go to for inspiration. Okay, <laughs> and it sort of gave me a chance to show a sculpture. So on the left is Andrea Burgart holding um, in her, her rad money shirt, and she's holding a, a, 
a little statue, it's a Santa Muerte, and on the right is the statue. And um, Santa Muerte is a, a new, relatively new s saint um, in Mexico, and it's a combination of the Grim Reaper and a Madonna. And um, people feel comfortable that it's uh, a Madonna you can approach for worldly matters. Not, not so much the heavenly matters, but like I need money, you know, my, my uh, I don't know, there's, someone's in jail, we need, we need uh, bail, that kind of, those issues. And this is my uh, interpretation of that statue in two forms. The one on the left um, I made when I was, uh, actually Chris was um, the resident artist at Dartmouth, and I had access to a plaster studio, and that was a lot of fun. Um, the one on the right I showed at uh, Red Bull. And, and, and this is really, um, like the one on the left, she's holding a, a tiny basket of little black eggs because it's near Easter. Um, on the right, it's a gas mask, and there's, you know, a lot of, like, coconuts and other items in. And I think it's really about the fluidity of um, a piece of art, something that each time I can, I don't know, tweak in some way. What am I doing on time? Okay, this is, uh, I wrote palette cleanser. Um, <laughs> it's a work on paper, it's a collage. It has, uh, all through my work, I'm, I'm doing a little Day of the Dead smileys. Um, that wasn't a, med a wedding magazine, but uh, anyway. <laughs> okay, this is um, going back to the mid-90s uh, when I first moved to Williamsburg. Uh, let's see, 1994. And um, it was really the first time I had an extra room for a studio. Um, and I started making larger paintings. That's 60 by 72. And um, there's a little explanation. On the upper left is a picture of a, a priest, and he's performing a ritual called Abhishekam. And this is part of a larger um, puja, or an adoration of a of a, um, a deity. And so he's pouring milk over this Shiva Lingam. And a Shiva Lingam is um, either an egg or a, a, a rock or um, some sort of phallic imagery that's a part, uh, it's, it's associated with Shiva, which is part of a, a Hindu trinity of male deities, Shiva, Vishnu, Brahma. Um, so I get to my studio. Oh, I should say, I, I right after um, 10th grade, I mean, yeah, it was 10th grade, it sounds so young now, high school, I went to join, um, I wanted to learn yoga, so I ran off for two years to an ashram in Southern California, Imperial Valley, and um, studied yoga. And part of that training was to perform this kind of pouring over uh, statues and you put flowers, so. When I started painting, it was a, a natural segue. I think there's something to do with the food and the baking too, but anyway, it was a natural segue. I was taking an enamel and doing a lot of pouring, and that's how I'd make the, the images. So that's three Shiva lingams on the right. Um, the skeletons come out of a pastry bag again. Um, there's charcoal, glitter. Okay, that's another one. Oops, I'm gonna go back. Okay, another Shiva Lingam. <laughs> um, this one has some spray paint, which, you know, I use so much more now. Um, and it, you know, it's also, it's got a lot of embellishment. I'm actually adding the garlands. Um, those flowers are, are an acrylic paint that's made, uh, you know, just like you would uh, do for a, a cake decoration. There's glitter. Right, okay. And again, you know, um, I was really drawing from this tradition. So in the back is a, a large uh, yantra. It's called Sri Yantra. Um, I've done this, you know, the Day of the Dead skeletons and, um, and a lot of tantra in, in, in India. There's a, a, a real similarity in how they're used you know, in works of art. So I was, you know, riffing on that. This had Christmas lights. 
um, the little tondo is a little glitter moon. I think this is about 60 inches high by like 58. Um, also in 1995, um, I was, uh, you know, it was really previous to the uh, Brides magazines. I was uh, working with uh, goddesses and monsters on uh, fashion magazines. I have a whole series of these I'm just throwing into the a, a Gorgon. I think it's Christy Turlington. <laughs> Maybe remembers that name. Gorgon on the right. And on the left um, is a female Ganesha. Their little, her little vehicle mouse in the lower right. I always love doing that. I like playing with uh, like found source material and seeing what comes up. Okay, so um, this is also in the 90s. In, in my, uh, my studio is now in a basement underneath my apartment on North 9th Street in uh, Williamsburg. And um, I'm still pouring enamel paint to, you know, to make the, the, the image. I'm, uh, and, and along with just adding physicality to the canvas, I'm setting up these uh, it was really for my own entertainment and pleasure, these altars, you know, the, there's a Shiva lingam in front made out, out of coconuts and uh, Christmas garlands. There's actually three paintings in there, uh, which are standalone pieces, but, you know, for, for the way my brain worked, I like to see them um, sort of come to life in these vignettes and these stories. And uh, because um, Kali's really associated with the, the feminine, there's all these pictures of my family sort of stuck on the, uh, the bottom part of the face there. It's really an, an ancestral altar. And this is um, one more of those. <laughs> okay, so my mother's hanging on the painting in the middle. <laughs> my notes say she was a witch. <laughs> But it's true, she was a practicing witch. <laughs> she was pagan. <laughs> um, so this has some, uh, you know, pentacles in the, uh, the painting, and there's a Shiva lingam on the ground made out of garlands and bananas, and um, bows stuck on the uh, canvas. And the handprints are very common in uh, temples for fertility. So I guess I'm still really trying um, to find, you know, the painting, is it sculpture, is it painting, can I put them together, how do I get this sort of uh, lusciousness? Um, I had a, I went to my first art residency in Yaddo, and uh, this is 1999, I don't know why, I got into rainbows. <laughs> And uh, I wrote my note, talk about cliches. You know, when a cliche comes up in my work, it's like, if I don't want to push it away, the only thing to, to do is to really double down on it. <laughs> um, and I think there's always this, uh, uh, I, I wrote in one of my statements about marrying mythology and popular culture. I, I think some of these, you know, great themes are always right in front of us in some form, and you can just, pick them out even in a hallmark, you know, at whatever level that you, you approach, you know, if you're looking for the signs, you will see them. Um, so the slide on the left actually was the first one of these to leave the studio and was shown at Cheryl Palavin Gallery. Um, she was in Tribeca, I believe this is 2001, and um, it's called Jagannath. The, the little image on the right is the traditional Jagannath from India. His happy little self and my interpretation on the left. And, you know, why Jagannath? Okay, I was really outing myself, but um, when I left that ashram and I got back to New York, I was just in between 
like, uh, it was right before I finally called up Tish and Snook and said, I don't know what to do. And we started going out. But I went to live, there was a Hare Krishna temple on 54th Street. And I was really used to living in this sort of, you know, rigorous style. So I was, um, my mother lived on the Upper West Side. I said, oh, I'm going to go stay with the Hare Krishnas. Um, and, and their day starts at 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. is one of these elaborate pujas, chanting, bells, incense, really beautiful. Um, and there's three windows, or, or three vignettes you can stand in, you know, one of a large uh, Krishna Radha, I forget what the second one was, but the third one was Jagannath, and I would always gravitate to that one as a more totemic figure. So I spent a lot of time looking at this face. I mean, this was made... You know, let's see, if that was, God, if that was the 70s, and this is like 20 years later. But that, that image just <laughs> was seared into my brain. I didn't last there too long. <laughs> this is like 3 a.m. was a little rigorous. And the last rainbow painting I made was just this summer. Um, it's the painting on the left. It's untitled at this point. But um, I don't know. I, I didn't deliberately look at the little pony first, but I found that <laughs> when I was cruising around the internet, and uh, there's not time to go into how long I spent on Tumblr at one point in my life, but any, anywho, just say this is the, you know, the rainbow came back this year after a hiatus of, you know, 15 years. Um, Okay, another palette cleanser. This is a, just a large work on paper. It's 50 by 38. It uh, uh, actually looks like a little emoji face. A lot of collage material. Some of the collage, I'm starting to use the lace uh, on paper so that I could work it in some Christmas wrapping. I think that's about 50 by 38 inches. How are we doing on time? Oh, I gotta get through this. Okay. Um, and these these are the paints. I'm starting to use more spray spray paint in the wor work. Blech. More spray paint in the work. Um, I'm also still playing with a lot of collage and uh, the Posada image. My eyes frequent the work. And this one is <laughs> perfect lead into Echolalia. This is 48 by 36. Um, it's mostly acrylic, and um, that sort of scrolling, which I, I really see when you do a slide lecture and you go back, you really see these tendencies. And this, this loop is just followed me from some of my earliest drawings. I mean, it's really a simple little scroll, but I, I see it, you know, frequently. And, uh, and the last one, Pentecostal, so it's 2009. It's <laughs> kind of a nasty painting. <laughs> but there's a, re a return to the lingam shapes. Um, there's more smix, you know, spray paint and these retablo hearts that I was using um, as a stencil on my trips from Mexico. And also um, some collage from women's magazines. Oh, I see. I did want to leave 2009 without showing a Christmas in July painting. I, I really, I made a group really trying to use Christmas wrapping. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I love this painting, but I really don't have a lot to say about it. It's just, it's like, there's a black Madonna, big sacred heart, Santa. Shooting rays. This is row. It's 45 by 54, 2009, and it's really one of the first paintings that was, uh, you know, all spray paint. You know, still uh, working up to the next phase. So, 2010, this is Stargazer's Aura, it's 60 by 48. And um, in between that last painting and this, I had, uh, had a found doily that I spray painted through. It fell off the painting and there was this cool pattern. And that really sent me down this 
rabbit hole of like, wow, I can use that. You know, there's, I was upstate, there's a lot of a discarded lace. There's a lot of uh, hand crocheted tablecloths available. So I really, um, you know, the next five years worked exclusively with, um, let's say, 75% exclusively with lace and spray paint. This is a Critical Edge. It's 48 by 52. It's 2011. Um, this is what the studio looked like in Walton, probably the summer of, I'm going to say 2010. I still have all my backup collage material there on the floor. I had to channel my <laughs> teenage self like, well, if I was out doing spray paint graffiti now, at, but then at 16, you know, this was supposed to get a laugh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, baby. <sighs> and the next slide is, um, this is Jason Andrews and I at Norti Mar, and it's um, 2012, and it's really my first solo show in New York in about eight years. You know, I'd had a, a lot of, um, been at a lot of group shows and kept this, you know, kept work out there. But I felt like this, this pattern work and this process was really wanted to leave the studio. It was like, I think it was Margaret told me this years ago. There, you know, you're gonna come a time where your work will take itself out. You know, so if you're too much in your head worrying about like who do I get or what do I do, you know, it's just. And she was right. <laughs> um, so I was looking, I was talking about that little looping thing that's going on, you know, still there. Um, the painting in the middle is titled Totter. And I believe it was, mm, I know it was bigger than 40 by 30, probably the next size up, 50 by 60. It was a great show, a lot of fun to do. And this is my studio at that time on Central Avenue in Bushwick. Uh, I was painting both on unstretched canvas. Uh, spray painting goes fast, so there's a lot of edit, and um, there was times I didn't want to stop, so I went to unstretched canvas for a while. Uh, and that little box that's hanging there, I think very important in the work. <laughs> Actually, it was Susan Wanklin that hung this box. She took the box from the floor and put it up on the wall, and I was like, ah! You know, I just had it around. I'd been unfolding as you, and using these shapes as stencils, and um, I'll let the slides show you. You know, they really uh, started lending another layer to that, you know, using lace. This is 36 by 30, it's called My Window Last Night. It was in the Norte Mar show. I guess like, there's some rainbow happening. This is untitled, it's 65 by 57. It was done in 2012. And the little almost base, this is what happened. These sort of abstract atmospheric fields with the box stencil started becoming faces. You know. This is called Opium Smokers, uh, it's 45 by 54. There was another version of this with the same boxes, it was very clean, and then this one started getting really layered, and when I put them next to each other, it was sort of like before and after. This is an Inception, it's 65 by 57, we're now at 2012. Um, you know, the lace patterns that I was, I was, I was spray painting, um, the lace itself would start to pick up imagery that I found really interesting. Some of them I'd retire as pieces on their, their own. Some I would look at and say, oh, that happened accidentally. I'm going to try to make that on the next canvas. 
So I found this sort of nice feedback loop. This was just a nice picture. I was working upstate and um, you could be outside and with obviously with spray paint, this is a huge boon. You've got a mask on, it's, it's toxic, so at least has a lot of the uh, different box imagery and, and sort of the spawn of the box imagery. Okay, this is my um, first show with Klaus von Nixigan Gallery in 2014, Winter is Coming. Um, Abelita on the left is a large unfolded box that's been turned into um, an illustrator file and then output and in, in, in sized up in wood so that I could, I was, I had this, I had one or two of these boxes and I would go to Kim's and dig through their recycling looking for that same box. If I remember, Jason and I went on a huge hunt for this box. There's a whole backstory to this box. Anyway, finally, <laughs> someone, someone, I think EJ said, hey, I know someone who can put that in Illustrator for you. You can always have it. <laughs> it's a great idea. And the painting on the right is uh, one of the Blue Menina series, sort of after Picasso's, after Velasquez. Um, this is called Key to My Heart. It's 45 by 64, 2012. Um, the shapes really come from the box patterns. Again, this is one when I said there was traces left on a piece of lace that I'd look at. You know, I would then go back to that and try to recreate it. Finally, those, those pieces, like, um, like those started moving around and became this. I called it a three-legged visitor. Um, it was keeping very flat. I was thinking of quilts, you know, really textiles. This is 65 by 57. This is called High Stepper, 65 by 57. This is 2013. So once those shapes really happened, um, I don't know, it just kind of took over, you know. What were they saying? What were they doing? This is Destiny Connector, Conductor, 60 by 52, 2012. This is Electric Jesus, it's 54 by 45. I actually know somebody that's his name. <laughs> he wrote, his name's Talat, but he wrote the book Electric Jesus. Um, that, that framing on the outside, I don't have the slide, but I, I found an image that had that back in, in you know, 91. I think it comes from a, a yantra, but you know, it's, it's much looser and freer now. It's so slipping into darkness, 54 by 45. So I'm going to say it's a butterfly shape without being a butterfly. That turned into this lunar butterfly. And it's got little parentheses, Eduardo. This is a person I know in Cusco. And he serves um, medicine. He serves ayahuasca. So the, uh, the lunar aspect, these ceremonies usually take place at night. Usually, always. Okay, Omateo. That's a salute to sort of like saying great spirit. It's uh, more literally it refers to a dual feminine and masculine aspects of creation in the, the Mexican Mixtec tradition. And this is, um, it was about a year ago, right? It was the show at Klaus von Mixagon Gallery. Let's go through a few of the images. And um, along with the paintings, I'd started having some um, textiles made from the paintings produced in 
Peru, which I was, uh, I, I guess I've been visiting for a couple years at this point. <laughs> My happy place. This is a picture of PSAC right as you come in. PSAC's about a half hour from Cusco. It's very Andean, so uh, as you can see, the mountains are sort of dry like the southwest, but very lush, lush valleys. Yay! <laughs> the album cover. That's Mike Olin, Joe Balwig, Joy Curtis, Andrea Burgart, my husband Chris Martin. We all had a wonderful trip down there to Machu Picchu and lots of other hikes. And um, It's there because it was on one of, I, I don't know if you can make out, these are steps on the left. Coming out of um, one of these hikes, on one of my trips, I passed this uh, Andean textile school. And that's how I met Raul, who's on the right, and um, he produced the textiles, um, or the tapestries, really. I left him pictures of the work, and then um, it was sort of uh, in his um, in his ballpark how he actually got the interpretation of them. Like, so this is um, Red Lunar Skywalker. This is what it looks like on the loom. Um, this is a hand loom process, so Raul would do the grounds. And then the finished piece, he would, he would take the grounds to Ayacucho, which is his hometown, and his family would do the embroidery. Uh, so it was a really fun project. It took a couple years to get like 30 produced. I would go down there and would talk and then I'd come back and some would be done or some would be in Ayacucho or, you know, it was a really a, a wonderful process. Uh, Cusco's loaded with amazing, amazing textile artists. This is, uh, I called it salamander. That's not really its name, but it reminds me of a salamander. It's uh, 77 by 60 and it's textile on the right. And I really love the leaps. Um, we, we could communicate by Facebook Messenger, and uh, one time he, he, he said, he's, you don't know how many phone calls I'm making to my family asking me if it's right, is it right? And I'm like, it's just right, it's right. Just keep, keep going. I guess I gotta keep going. Okay, this is my studio in Bovina, and uh, there's just some paintings in, in progress. This is how I start, I lay down a acrylic ground and uh, that's Campesino Bailando on the wall. And that's the finished piece. Um, it was shown at 39 Great Jones last, know, last March, I think. Uh, this is Hammer of the Gods. A little painting on the left and the textile on the right. Inspirational sources. Um, you know, what are these? Are they men? Are they, <laughs> what are these with the big noses? Um, they really emerge so strongly in the work and I don't know. It's just really like on the last two trips when I was walking around, I was like, you know, I'm I'm kind of seeing these things all over the place. They've been in my mind and um, just sort of like toss salad, <laughs> you know. But they've they've come out in the work, and then when I look around, they're kind of all in front of me. <laughs> you know, it's like you paint what you see. That's Quicksilver on the left. I don't know if it's really a llama, but <laughs> love the llamas. Okay, some of the more, um, you know, some of my heroes, and, and, and these are things I noticed after the fact, was this Paul Clay drawing on the left and my painting on the right. And I was like, oh, you know, there's some sort of a shout out. You know, likewise, when this uh, Picabi was hanging at MoMA, everybody was texting me this image. I'm like, did you see this, Tam? Did you see this? I was like, yeah, <laughs> love it. 
we got to go a little quicker. Okay, this cactus. Um, this is a picture of a San Pedro cactus, also known as Wachuma, and it really inspired the next suite of uh, paintings. Its nickname in uh, Spanish is Saint Peter. It's claimed to hold the gates of heaven, or hold the keys to the gates of heaven. It's also kind of cute. That's, that's my feet, which really match the dream catcher. <laughs> Well, what were the odds of that? <gasps> this is 65 by 57, 2013. It's titled Panka because that's what I called my grandfather when I was a little girl. This is Day Sentinel, 65 by 57. And most recently, this is Rhythmic Lizard. It's 77 by 60. The background, um, the red lines are, are actually in relief. I started going back in and drawing directly from a tube of paint, which is very similar to having a pastry bag. It's a real natural, I see, <laughs> I see some heads nodding. <laughs> You know, um, really kind of brings me to how much drawing plays an um, important role in my work. You know, for every painting, I'm, you know, if you don't have a studio, if you don't have an extra room, you can always be drawing. You know, I mean, look at what's up in the gallery right now across the hall, it's phenomenal. You know, and James Castle didn't have, you know, I was always, Where's my loft? You know, where's my big loft? <laughs> it's like, well, you got to New York too late for that. <laughs> but um, so to speak to drawing, um, this is just some of the the kind of quick watercolor pads I keep when I'm traveling in Peru, and on, and left is um, a style of embroidery from the Shipibo tribe that is in uh, around Pacalpa and up and down the Amazon. Really beautiful, um, really beautiful work. And they're really known, um, I mean, we're seeing sort of a popular use of it, but all their imagery comes from their songs. So it's really a lyrical language, and all their songs comes from their ritual use of ayahuasca as a, a healing uh, medicine. And this is uh, myself and Lucmila is on the right. She's in, in, in Shipibo Maestro. She's, when I say maestro, it's really like being a doctor. I mean, right now you hear so much about ayahuasca and it's all in the news, but really she's dieted with over 200 plants. Like the, the Amazon is, you know, for lack, you know, is the drugstore. You know, if you're sick, you go, you need someone that knows the leaves. You know, you need somebody that knows the tea to drink, everything is, um, you know, really carried by these people and how to keep their people healthy. Um, plus the embroideries, like. <laughs> so um, in, in, in this next uh, project that I'm doing, they don't make fabric, so I'm bringing down fabric, and I just do a simple chalk drawing, and I give it to Lucmila or Beatrice or one of the women, and they use their, um, their iconography to do the embroidery, so I'm really excited about this. <laughs> I've got like three, and I hope to pick up more in April. I need to work on some of the display and finishing, but it was a real thrill to see just how really the basic chalk, simple line drawing, how much simpatico, how they could really read the image and you know, go right to it and um, just embrace it and it came back, I was like, ah. <laughs> oh, so, so back to drawing. Um, this was serendipitous, I found the drawing on the right half made in a, a photo on the left. <laughs> My foot, what to say about that one. 
Um, so we showed drawings um, in my last show at Class Bond Nixagon, and uh, you know, uh, several people came up and said, I didn't know you drew. I was like, oh, <laughs> interesting. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know anybody didn't draw. <laughs> but um, again, in doing this, you know, and I, was, I guess I'm talking about tendencies here in the work. I know as a student, you're often looking to find yourself or find your vocabulary, or find your subject matter, or find your content, find your, find your way, really. And, uh, you know, we all do it, but uh, there is something inherent. I think the more you're working, you'll find that is you. And that, that you know, kind of distilling that and letting that really come out in the work is uh, is the growth or the difference between um, you know just I don't know what I'm doing to like oh I, I see what I'm doing and the drawing on the left I don't even believe this, this is like from 2000 I did in India and the one on the right I did a couple years ago and you know the snake that loopy um, on the left, the, the large snake is now tied into that sort of loopy frame that's around the eyes. And that pattern that goes down the sides is in the background. Um, you know, none of this is, is conscious thinking. It's just kind of there. Can't get away from it. This is uh, another drawing. These are all 16 by 20. Not a llama, but <laughs> two heads. Okay, and so um, this is the studio last summer. You know, I really found myself uh, a kind of natural, um, I wouldn't say an end, but just an exhaustion to consistently using spray paint through uh, lace for patterns. So I wanted to return to just uh, maybe, maybe even from the drawings, just return to a more direct, uh, simple technique of a brush and some paint, <laughs> no mask. Um, but even so, on the right, you can see my box. She's got her like lace hat on. It's like I always have these like stuff in the studio that I, I need. I don't know. <laughs> it's like my security blanket. I always have my props, and there's always some some altar kind of creeping up in the corner and spilling out that, you know, gets taken down when I move. Uh, so these next three, four slides were all from this summer. This is uh, still entitled, it's 60 by 48, it's acrylic on canvas. I was kind of thinking of the, the, the background print as a little like a uh, modernist treatment of a leopard or something, like a shamanic grid. This is Critter. I knew someone named Critter, <laughs> in the, also in the 70s. <laughs> this is 60 by 48. I've, I've come to think this is a little bit of a self-portrait. And I'm ending on one of these um, very patterned, two-headed nose creatures with three legs. I don't know if the I don't know if that's a leg or a tail. Kind of can function as both. Seven thirty. <laughs>